I want to introduce uh, Mr. David Frex. He is all the way here from West Virginia. All right. He's a, he's a supporter of Open Carry Texas for a long time. You may recall we've had people from Wisconsin down here. We've had people from Arkansas down here that, uh, that really support what we're doing. Uh, so David happened to be in town and I wanted to invite him up to talk about the realities of those things that I just talked about that Art Acevedo says is going to happen if we get open carry of handguns. So Mr. David Prex. All right, well, you know who I am. David from West Virginia. Glad to be in Texas for the first time. Uh, I want to bring welcome greetings from West Virginia from the Patriots there. They obviously support your effort uh, to get back some of those rights that have been lost over all the years. I will tell you, when you've lost those rights, it takes a while to get them back. That's just the way it goes, folks. We've learned that in West Virginia, and we keep pressing on. But uh, people in other states support you, and always remember that when the fight gets hard. You do have people across the country who are in your corner and are rooting for you. A little bit about West Virginia, just so you understand. West Virginia is an open carry state. It's not an open carry state because the legislature says we can. It's because the Constitution of West Virginia says we can, yeah. and there's oh, no yeah. law against it. 18 years old, no permit. If you are not a prohibited person, you can open carry a Thank modern you. handgun in the state of West Virginia. I realize that's what you guys want, and we want constitutional carry, and you want it too. We are in that battle as well, and we'll take it on with the legislature again next year. So remember, it's a step-by-step -step process. We're living it every year. Uh, I have been watching from afar the legislative activities of the Texas legislature, and I was fortunate enough to have the time to watch the police chief of Austin sit and say a couple of things in hearings that just patently weren't true. And so I'm here to talk to a couple of those points today so that if the police chief ever sees this video, he can get it right next time. First of all, he asked the question to the committee, where is the money going to come from so that we can retrain those great Austin police officers that are going to obviously need retrained, right? The answer is, you're not going to get a dime for retraining, and the reason is, the officers don't need to be retrained. When they're trained to begin with, they're trained to deal with each and every one of us as though we're potentially armed. That's all they'll be doing when open carry happens anyway. So no retraining will be necessary. Next he says, well, if open carry and modern handguns happens, we're going to get more calls. The public is going to be alarmed. We're going to be in, you know, an influx of all of these different calls from the public. Let me tell you something. I live in West Virginia. I open carry a modern handgun. I have never once been stopped by a police officer because they got a call on me. The reason, Chief, that you're getting calls is because it's not so common to see this. A long gun being carried out in public and to public places where it's appropriate and allowed. You will have less calls, probably no calls, when open carry gets passed in the Texas legislature. That's just the facts of the matter. Next, he says, well, how are we going to know if permit open carry passes? How are we going to know if that guy carrying a handgun has a permit? We're going to have to go up and talk to him. The answer is, no, you're not, because Debiri v. U.S. says that a handgun, where legally carried, is not reasonable suspicion or probable cause. He has, his officers have no right to come and engage you if you're legally carrying a firearm. That's the bottom line. Next, he says, people are going to come up behind you when you're carrying a modern firearm and they're going to steal it from your holster because you don't know about retention. I've been living in West Virginia for 25 years. Let me tell you how many times I've heard that happen. Zero. People just don't come up behind open carriers and grab their guns out. Maybe to a police officer because they're a criminal, but that simply is a red herring. It doesn't happen. The police officers here in Austin shouldn't be worried about it, and the chief should be ashamed of himself for even bringing it up. So, in summary, I just want to explain to Chief Acevedo that open carry of modern handguns is going on all across the United States. Vermont has had it. 
forever. They have no problems. Come to West Virginia, talk to the police officers and the chiefs of police of West Virginia, and you'll find out there is no problem with legally carrying a firearm in the state of West Virginia on your hip where you can see it so that you don't have to lug around a big long gun that may very well scare some people who don't understand about firearms. That's the bottom line. Chief Acevedo, you should be ashamed of yourself for each and everything you said in the committee hearings that day. Amen. Next, Amen. liberal. Yeah, we know. Now, a couple more things before I finish up. I'm almost done so we can get on with our walk. Um, just wanted to, I think uh, most of you, if you uh, watch about open carry, you know that in late March, there was a group, a small group from Virginia open carry going to hang out to a walk with some patriots over in Detroit. You've probably seen those videos as well. Do a YouTube search of Detroit drone open carry. They're pretty interesting videos. They're actually well done. I like them. But uh, those guys were going over in the end of March, and unfortunately, they were killed in a car accident. So if you would, I would like for us all to take a, and just have a moment of silence for those four patriots that certainly would have stood up here and said exactly what I said today. And their names were Jason Spitzer III, David Alexander Armstrong, Jimmy Higgins, and Stephen Kim. Thank you. In closing, I just want to say thank you very much to CJ for all you've done. Thank you for arranging it so that I could be here today while I was in town. I'm fortunate to be here, blessed to be here, glad to be here. I hope you've seen my posts. I hope you know that I've been supporting this group for about two years now that they've been up and running. And uh, I will continue to do so, continue to encourage you to do these walks. But here's one thing I think I want to leave you with. Oh, and I also want to thank my friend, Pastor Terry Holton, the open carry preacher. He's been a good friend to me. He's helped me to really understand what's going on here in Texas. And trust me, because of that friendship with Terry, I can tell you, I think I know more about the Texas gun movement than probably a lot of the people in the state of Texas who aren't in this movement, all the way from West Virginia. So when you pay attention to other people's states, that's the way it works. So I'm thankful to CJ and thankful to Pastor Terry for all they've done for me to keep me informed. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my group, the West Virginia Citizens Defense League. Also, a couple of my friends uh, that are uh, working the legislative system in Ohio and out in New Hampshire and also uh, Idaho. Great patriots all across the United States going for open carry and um, constitutional carry. So be supportive of all the different groups. And remember, people don't understand this too well. So if you see people from out of state that don't understand it, be kind, explain it to them and say, we don't want to carry our long guns. We want to carry a modern handgun on our <laughs> hip for political reasons and for self-defense protection reasons. It's our right to do that. And with that, I'd like to just say one more thing to the chief here in Austin. I heard that there are some more um, job openings, ones in Maryland, and one's in New York, and as far as I'm concerned, I think I speak for the group when I say, why don't you apply for a job somewhere else? Because the people around here, we don't want you around here anymore. Take a yeah. job out of state and get out of here and leave us alone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so with that, I say, thank you for having me. If I haven't met you yet, please come over and say hi. Scott's going to start getting some pictures while we're walking. Love to have pictures with everybody. And God bless West Virginia. And God bless the great state of Texas. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you, brother. All right. So thank you, David. Uh, he's coming along.